I actually don't have a sense of what is it that Muslims themselves want. Is there a shift? What are young Muslims? Is, is the youth got completely different aspirations from one generation back? There's no sense of any voices coming from within the community. Do you, you know, in your interactions, maybe it's not part of your, your official narrative, but do you have a sense, would you be able to tell this audience today, what is it that Muslims really want? See, I, whatever I say, whatever I say is being a public figure has implications for, for our society. Um, anything that I say that creates a greater rift between communities, even if it's true, even if it's, if, if it's the, uh, the right thing, um, would not be acceptable. I, I would not find it acceptable because ultimately, whatever I say and whatever I do must bring communities together, not divide them. And therefore, when I speak in public, I would be careful with my words. But the fact remains that a lot of people in my community would look at me and say that I'm letting them down, that I'm not speaking up for them. Now, I am saying that for Pehlu Khan, if a Muslim speaks, it will not have the same impact in the conditions that in which we live today than someone who's not a Muslim speaking. And there are enough people in this country, enough people in this country who will speak for all the legitimate rights of Muslims. So why don't we let them speak? Why should we monopolize speaking for our own community when speaking for our own community will drive a wedge between communities? Why don't we encourage others to speak about it? Stand by them, support them, but let others speak because I think that's what will bring a greater syncretic bonding in our society. But Salman, isn't there an intrinsic idea of second class citizenship there? You know, so Dalits can speak for themselves, Patils can speak for themselves, Gujars can, you know, break up the railroads because they want something. And Muslims, you know, so again I'm coming back to the point that they've really been let down by the BJP and they've really been let down by the Congress because nobody allows them to just be 70 years later, even young Muslims are just not allowed to be ordinary citizens of this country. When I went to Aligarh Muslim University and I spoke there, all the youngsters were, you know, they were very lamenting their position in society. And I said to them, but listen, the constitution gives you equal rights. You are a citizen of this country and claim your rights. You know, why are you in this constant crouch position where someone has to speak as noblesse oblige on your behalf? And everything you're saying right now reinforces that, that the Muslim community can't speak up for Pehlu Khan and for, you know, Junaid and all the people who have been killed, lynched on camera. People are getting away. Congress won't speak for them. They can't speak for themselves. Why are we blaming the BJP for them being second-class citizens? We have ingrained it into them that they are second-class citizens. No, no, this is, uh, this is the tragedy. I mean, frankly, this is, this is the tragedy of our times. Um, except that I make a distinction between ideology and strategy. Ideology is about what is the right thing to do. Strategy is that what is, what is, what will work in these circumstances. Now, if you have the right balance between ideology and strategy, you're fine. If you give, give a completely to a strategy, then you obviously are adrift of your ideology. So where do you find the right balance is very, very critical. What do the young people, young Muslims want is no different from what the young Hindus want. They want jobs, they want comfort, they, are, they aspire to a good life, etc. That's all they want. Now, anything that gives them an impression that this is not going to be given to them, it can't be given to them. When we brought the Satcher Committee, and I know that there are a lot of, lot of issues on which we can't give you a satisfactory answer. But you know, after much thinking, and I was not part of that government, I, was, I became part of the government in the second term, in the second part of the UPA. When the Satcher Committee sat down and gave the recommendations that he did based on scientific research, I believe it was the, uh, the only such proposition of its kind in any democracy of the world. And the Satcher Committee, implementation of the Satcher Committee could have changed the face of our country and changed the relationship between minorities and, and particularly Muslims and the rest of the country. But unfortunately, 
This was dubbed by the BJP as appeasement. This was dubbed as an illegitimate outreach to Muslims, etc. And now it's been put into a dustbin. And I think that was the greatest mistress, missed opportunity of our times, that we couldn't implement such a, to the extent that we should have. I mean, that's the irony of the appeasement dialogue, that when the Sachar Committee report came out, it actually showed that the status of Muslims is possibly lower than Dalits in this country. And yet we keep speaking of sure. it as appeasement. I would, again, lay that at the Congress door, but I'll, I'll resist for the moment.